Dr. Alan Christensen here. You hear a lot about changes that take place as we age. You know, it almost seems like you could have a nursery full of happy, maybe crying, but still happy, beautiful little babies. And you could almost imagine like a little sticker like you put on a car and the warranty is good till 40 years or 40,000 miles. <laughs> you know, somewhere around 40, mid 40s, our vision can change. We can get more aches and pains. We can get more fatigued. It ties to a drop in hormones, but why do they drop? You know, why do they drop around that time? Why wouldn't we be healthy to 100? You know, it's a good question. The answer, surprisingly, comes from the science of evolutionary biology. It turns out that our health, our traits, how our bodies work, is really a function of what makes us effective at surviving, not getting killed, <laughs> getting ourselves fed, and making a baby every now and then. <laughs> the better we are at those three skills, the more apt we are to pass on our genes. And the more our genes help in those three skills, the more those genes become common. Now here's the catch. The big one, the last big one, the making a baby every now and then, that doesn't go on our whole lifespan. So up to the point of reproduction, perhaps 40s, mid 40s at the most, up to that point, the healthier we are, the more we pass on our genes and the more those genes become common. But what happens to our health after our mid 40s has no reflection on our genetic output. There's no genetic incentive for us to be healthy past that point. So adaptation and survival is really about survival of the gene. Unfortunately, it's not about the individual. You know, we're just gene carriers. If there was some crazy way in which you had babies in proportion to your age and you had more babies the older you were, we would see people with lifespans to hundreds of years of age because there'd be a genetic advantage for that. But as it stands, we're not helpful for the gene pool after reproduction. Some have gone farther and argued that it may even be better if we're not in the way eating up all the younger people's bananas. <laughs> so there may be a disincentive for us to be healthy after our reproductive years. That's one of the concepts behind healthy levels of our hormones and keeping them as they were, not at adolescence, but as they were perhaps mid 30s or early 40s. We're kind of cheating what the genes have in mind for us and what they have in store for us. Many talk about why would we do something different than what our bodies want if they want to have this drop off, isn't that natural? Well, it is natural, but it's not really in our personal best interest. So thankfully, we can have hormones as they were when we were in our prime and still have the benefits and the wisdom and the experience of our later years. And we can tie that together. And that's some good stuff that we've gotten from natural medicine and science being brought together for our health.